I've been looking forward to the new HBO documentary about Scientology for a while now. And I never got around to reading the book it's based on, but I've been following the run-up to the debut in the religious news ever since HBO announced that they'd basically retained all the lawyers in advance of releasing it. And i got to say, it was pretty good. And from a filmmaking perspective, I guess I could nitpick a few bits and pieces, but by and large, they did a great job of detailing the history of corruption and abuses that have permeated the Church of Scientology since its conception. They talk about the psychological abuse, the physical abuse, the fleecing of their followers, the harassment of former members, the deranged dogma, the tax evasion, and the heinous dehumanization of the adherents. And the whole time, the big question I'm asking myself is, why are you picking on Scientology, though? I mean, honestly, not that I don't admire the filmmakers for taking on this subject, but if you really want to tell a horrible story, why don't you do the same documentary but use the Mormons? You want some insane cult intrigue and violent retribution? They got you covered for a fucking trilogy. Why not make an expose on the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Seventh-day Adventists or those crazy snake masturbators in West Virginia? Look, every single religion that was started after we have good documentary evidence has just as fucked up a story to tell as Scientology, so why single them out? You know, I'm not saying they're not batshit, crazy, corrupt, violent, brainwashing zealots. Of course they are. They're a religion. But is there anything about Scientology that makes it especially damaging, uniquely damaging? They they point out repeatedly how they have a special group called the Sea Org that gets paid 40 cents an hour to work for the church. And I'm thinking, shit, that's 40 cents an hour more than the Mormons pay all the people that do their work, right? They harp on Scientology charging people to clear them of engrams as though asking for 10% of your income in exchange for eternal hamburgers on Wednesday is somehow less egregious. Look, two hours of documentary, I didn't see a single fucking charge leveled against the Scientologists that you couldn't just as easily have applied to all the other religions. Unless suddenly the rest of the world agrees with the anti-theistic position that taking money in exchange for unverifiable promises is immoral, I don't really see what the issue is. And religion, of course, loves this kind of shit because it allows them to step back and the Baptists can point and laugh and they can say, alien overlords dumping frozen prisoners into volcanoes and then nuking their souls. That's just silly. Everybody knows the earth was first peopled when a talking snake convinced a person made from a rib to eat the wrong magic apple. Your stuff is weird. And then at the same time, I guess the Catholics are pointing and saying, oh, my God, those horrible people, they abuse children and they use their church to cover it up. Oh, that's so, so, so terrible. And the evangelicals are pointing at them and saying, look at how they've abused the tax laws to shelter their ill-begotten gains. It's awful. And the Mormons point and say, look at how they blindly were willing to follow a known fraud who was wanted by virtually every government that was aware of his existence, those idiots. And the Jehovah's Witnesses point and they say, look at how they shun the people that leave their church and take notes because they seem to be pretty good at it. And yet, I don't even know how you pretend that this is bad compared to other religions. Switch the timelines. Imagine that Catholics started in 1953 and Scientology sprang up back in the first century. Now, my guess is that if we had video of the dude that started Catholicism, he would be exactly as impressive as the fat version of the scientist from Howard the Duck that started Scientology. But even if we had videos of the oceanic moonwalk and the police records from his donkey heist, I kind of doubt we'd be as quick to overlook all the child rape and accessory to child rape that they're getting away with. But somehow, all the various flavors of Christianity can crank the cognitive dissonance up to 11 and cringe when they see what a religion looks like when you take away the you believing in it part. Because honestly, what are the worst sins of Scientology? That they physically abused members who expressed doubt? Christians burn those motherfuckers alive! And the Christians, and probably some non-Christians, would stop me here and say, well, it's not like they're burning people alive today, Noah. To find an Abrahamic religion doing that, you've got to go all the way back to the 17th century or Afghanistan. Look, religions are scary. The very fact that a person can be sucked into something as plainly preposterous as Scientology is scary. You know, the fact that sane, rational people can be tricked out of their doubt and hand themselves over to such a transparent charlatan is terrifying. And, of course, we all like to think that we're too smart to get roped into something like that. And you know what? If you're listening to this show, maybe you are too smart to get roped into it. But, but that doesn't stop it from being scary because as many religions would be happy to show you, you don't have to believe in them to be harmed by them. And that's the thing. If you want to rank the world's religions by most damaging to least damaging, where does Scientology fall on that list? Is it really the most deserving of theological ridicule? When's the last time a Scientologist bombed an abortion clinic or a market square? When's the last time a Scientologist passed a law against gayness or tried to teach the xenovolcano theory of human origins in the public schools? Of course, I'm not pointing out any of this to defend Scientology, 
but rather to indict all the other religions. You know, this is what religion looks like when you strip away the cultural familiarity. It looks like blatant, rapacious manipulation painted with a thin veneer of schizophrenic buffoonery. And I'm also not saying any of this because I want to disparage the documentary. I would highly recommend it. It's a great couple of hours. If you get a chance to watch it, you should watch it. You know, I don't know that I learned anything new about Scientology but I probably knew a little bit more about it going in than the average person. That being said, even knowing all their dark secrets that were going to be revealed, there was an undeniable value in actually seeing the people, you know, like putting faces to the abusers of this insidious cult and seeing that they looked like kind of normal people. But there's more value to the documentary than just that. Because it also presents religion in a way that even religious people will recoil at. So the next time when like, people ask you why you speak up against religion, why you can't just leave Christianity alone, why, why you care so much about people not believing in God, just ask them to watch Going Clear. And then when it's over, you ask them if they feel a moral obligation to do something to protect the future victims of that cult. And then remind them that that's what all the religions look like when you're not indoctrinated into them.